Today we are going to make oil painting color charts and I have this pad of oil painting canvas uh, that we're going to make them on and I'm going to get my palette ready and then we'll get started. So I'll just start by saying that uh, the colors I'm using are my go-to colors, but I don't necessarily use all these colors at the same time. I have two yellows, two reds, two blues, and then Viridian Green, Payne's Gray, and a Transparent Earth Orange. The yellows are Bismuth Vanadate Yellow, which is a cooler yellow, and then Cadmium Yellow Medium. I, oh, I also have a raw sienna, I forgot to mention that. Then I've got cadmium red light and a quinidone red, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue. So those are the colors I use most often. And now I am just making my chart and I'm just going to go 10 across for all the colors I have minus white and then I was going to make a five uh, step value chart uh, from com like completely full saturation to the whitest white and I accidentally did six. Another thing I want to mention is that I'm doing my own thing here. You might have seen some other color chart videos or read books by like Richard Schmid where he shares his color charts or heard people with their own palettes or using palettes like the Zorn palette. Um, this is my personal palette and uh, just my personal exercise that I'm sharing with you. So if you're getting confused or wanting to correct me, uh, just know that this is uh, basically for myself and that I'm sharing it with you just so you can see what I'm up to. But um, I do hope that you get something from this. And for me, the main reason that I'm doing this is, um, and I honestly don't think that it matters which color you, colors you use for it. It's about um, seeing the range that your colors can make um, all in one place and also about seeing how colors mix because each color has different properties some have really uh, strong uh, tinting strengths like phthalo blue uh, reminds me of uh, wine or purple grape juice uh, how that stains things so easily yet there's other things like um, a banana you know would not really stain clothes very well much so um, yeah, everything, um, all the different paints have different properties, so seeing how they'll perform is a big part of this. I also noticed just some things, uh, like I said, I, um, I meant to just put five spaces below the, uh, to make a value range from the darks to the lightest, and the, by darks I mean uh, like a yellow isn't necessarily dark, but the most saturated to the least saturated with a titanium white. And um, so um, out of five, there would be like a middle and then uh, that would just be one part white and one part of your color. And uh, but because I did six, that has to be um it's no longer um, able to have that middle section. So what I do is I have two spaces between my uh, one to one mixture and uh, on the top or by the most saturated and then by the white or the, the most tinted, I only have one space between those. And that actually is more correct as far as the laws of mixing these because uh, between the lightest light that I mix, which just barely has any color in it, and the middle uh, mixture, which is the one to one part, white and color, um, there's not very much room, wiggle room, really, I should say, um, to create another step. Um, and if you notice on my palette afterwards that uh, it's just very, very subtle. 
but there is a lot more room to make uh, different values uh, going up the chart or towards the saturated color. So it reminds me of the laws. I was a music major in college and uh, just how if you were wondering what the black keys on the piano, it's because um, sometimes, well, it, it depends on what scale you're in, obviously, but there's like whole steps and half steps up the scale and um, that there's um, kind of like with this coloring, I've noticed there's um, a larger uh, space between the saturated color and the one-to-one -one, uh, ratio of the mixture of white and color than there is going down towards pure white, if that makes any sense at all. I hope I'm explaining that well. And um, some people have put uh, like masking tape to make like a perfect grid. So um, as you can see, my colors aren't perfect rectangles, but I actually like the fact that I'm even dragging a little of the paint so you can just see all the effects. You can also tell that this is handmade, um, a little quirky, and uh, but if you're like totally OCD and you need it perfect, I've seen people, you could probably find other videos that show uh, people that did a masking tape grid and then you, they pull the masking tapes to make their rectangles absolutely perfect. <clears throat> All right, so I've almost got all my colors down, just putting the tra transparent earth orange. Another thing I noticed about uh, the paints uh, when I did this mixture is that, um, so I'll just cut in here and say, so now I'm doing the one part to one part, uh, one part color to one part uh, of the color of paint. Uh, one part white, and the white I use is titanium white. It's not zinc white or titanium zinc white, um, it's just titanium white. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> here's what I'm talking about, how there's not much wiggle room between those two, but <clears throat> so I have two spaces between the one part and the fully on color, and there's just more room uh, to go up and create more um, <clears throat> color values. So is what I've noticed for most of these colors. And um, now you can also see here how the green really pops. And that's what I'm talking about. Some of the paints have different properties and they have stronger tinting strengths than others. For example, Cerulean Blue is notorious for not, um, for being a quite weak tinter. And so um, it kind of just turns into a lot of gray tones and even like, white almost um, it just loses its color if you try to mix it into anything and that's actually one of the properties I like about it is that it's so subtle and um, creates some real subtleties that you'll see maybe in my next video where I show how I mix it with things um, in this video we're just going to do the value study for the pure colors um, to white or the, the lightest lights. And I'm not mixing any of these colors with any of the other colors in this video, but I will be doing that and then show you the results in my next color chart video, which I plan to do next for next Tuesday. And uh, so I was gonna say some of the other things that I realized is how um, when I put the first color down, uh, this fully saturated color that um, I didn't have to lay it down too thick. Um, here I'm completely out of uh, paint, so I do have to add a little more. But uh, overall, I've noticed a lot of people I've taken some lessons from or um, even from my own experience that I can go thinner and do thinner layers with darker colors. And the more white you add, it seems that the thicker the paint has to be. And a lot of times those are the highlights or the lighter areas. But I am also noticing that, and I apologize, someone's vacuuming upstairs above my studio. So I hope you can hear me. 
Anyway, we'll, we'll give that a break for a second. <laughs> Okay, well, so I noticed that a lot of times uh, people can go thinner with darker paints and uh, have, to have to go thicker and use more paint when they're doing, oh dear, here we go again with the vacuuming. Um, so when they're doing lighter colors, they uh, apply it thicker. As you can see how thick the paint is going on, and I'm just noticing that... Um, I don't know I feel like it's just not a substantial uh, the balance of it isn't as substantial and so I just feel like to get the coverage I have to add more paint so I will be doing part two of this video series on the color charts for oil paints next Tuesday and we'll show how I mix each of the colors and then do all the tones from uh, dark to light. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. 